Welcome everyone to another edition of Seven Rivers Health. I'm Rick TC, your host. Today on our show, we've got a number of subjects that you're gonna be wanting to uh, watch for. Uh, we're gonna be talking about dementia and Alzheimer's disease with the nationally renowned speaker from Franciscan Skemp Healthcare. Also, we're gonna talk about depression and how that impacts you and uh, genetic testing that's going on here in our community that may help you in the long run. Also, we'll talk about healthy eating for the elderly. That's all coming up here on Seven Rivers Health. But first, we're gonna to talk to Dr. Thomas Lofi from Franciscan Scamp Healthcare about dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Dr. Lofi, thank you for joining us. Let's talk a little bit about dementia and Alzheimer's. First off, what are some signs that people can kind of look for regarding either dementia or Alzheimer's? The, the typical signs, especially with Alzheimer's, is short-term memory loss. Uh, they can't remember what they had for breakfast, for instance, or what happened yesterday, repeating conversations, things like that. Uh, language can be involved. They have a hard time coming up with the right word. Uh, they can't remember names in particular, names of objects or, or of people. They used to be able to remember everyone's name, and now they really stumble on names. Uh, can be a, a sign of Alzheimer's. And visual, what we call visual spatial problems. Uh, they're getting lost when they're driving, even to familiar places. You know, they can't tell where they are in the world, or their brain can't can't uh, let them know where they're going. Is there a particular kind of age level to maybe even start? I mean, I'm I'm in the 40s. Do I start need to start looking for possible signs of that, or what types of time? Where where's the timetable to start looking for these types that's, of symptoms? Yeah, that's a million dollar question. <laughs> when where when does Alzheimer's start? Typically, we see people in their 70s and 80s come in, uh, brought in usually by their families that are beginning to show signs. But the current thought uh, is that Alzheimer's actually starts in your 40s or 50s, the very first beginnings of the disease. We're just not aware of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now, when we don't have the test to determine that. So where do we go from here? I mean, where, 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 is the, where, where are we going with as far as research and looking into kind of the causes? The causes, yes. Uh, um, lots of research going on, both with the cause, and that has turned out to be a lot more complicated than people originally thought. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of research into medications for Alzheimer's. A lot of research in uh, prevention for Alzheimer's disease. That seems to be the, the biggest um, hot topic right now is how do we prevent Alzheimer's and when do we start trying to prevent it. What's being done uh, not only at Franciscan Skemp but also Mayo as well to kind of look at that. There's a, one study that's been out there that uh, no Franciscan Skemp has been doing for a couple of years now. Yeah, we've been participating in what we call the RAP study. It's looking at children of Alzheimer patients uh, we're following them long term. We started this several years ago, four or five years ago, maybe a little bit longer. And uh, we're looking, we test them uh, with memory tests and blood work and do some genetics and things like that. Uh, we're following these people long term so we know when they begin to show signs of uh, falling off the curve, the average, and, and seeing what kind of relationship that is with their parents. You know, if their mom had Alzheimer's or if their dad had Alzheimer's or both parents had Alzheimer's. Uh, so, so we're really looking at the beginning, being parts of the disease, and when do people sh first start showing signs of uh, problems? Um, and it might actually be in their 40s and 50s. Which is, it's, it's a, it's a yeah. scary thing for many people to kind of think that that, that could happen that, yes. at any time. It's a very scary thought. What, um, what types of things can people do to kind of, uh, but let's go back to that study first real quick. Um, if people are interested in that study, I mean, is it, are you looking still for people to get part of that study? We're still looking for controls. People who don't have, uh, whose parents are normal, basically. They don't have any evidence of a memory problem, some sort of dementia like Alzheimer's. We're all, uh, we have a completed the, 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 the total applicant pool, so to speak, mm -hmm. or the participant pool uh, for people with Alzheimer's disease or children of people with Alzheimer's, I should say. So that's closed, but we're always looking for controls. It's always harder to kind of recruit controls in your clinical research uh, as opposed to somebody who has the actual experience with the disease. So. And if people are interested to just call the... the call the, uh, the number at Francis and Skemp, and uh, we'll arrange for you to come in and get tested. 
Now, in general, uh, is there anything that people can do, uh, meanwhile, to try and avoid uh, dementia, Alzheimer's? Is there anything that you're seeing from the research or anything that, defra I mean, from your historical background with this, that people can do? There's lots of things you can do to lower, lower your risk of Alzheimer's. There's nothing, as far as I know, that we know of to prevent Alzheimer's. But you can certainly lower your risk for Alzheimer's disease. And that includes being physically active, being mentally active, do the crossword puzzles and the word searches and the jigsaw puzzles or whatever. Uh, control your cardiovascular risk factors because there seems to be a correlation between risks for heart disease and risks for brain disease. So make sure your cholesterol is okay, don't smoke, control your diabetes, control your blood pressure, things along those lines. But if you control those risk factors, keep yourself physically active, mentally active, and you eat a normal, reasonable diet, healthy diet, which doctors tell you to do all the time, but few people do, uh, that goes a long way with reducing your risk of Alzheimer's. Is it, how is the mind thing correlation-wise? I, I mean, by, by keeping your brain and, and keeping it active and keeping it loose, by doing the crossword puzzles and stuff like that? Yeah. That's not known exactly what the brain is doing. <laughs> it's doing the, something. It's doing something. But whether it, it, the brain is like any other muscle, you just have to use it or you lose it, or whether you increase the reserve capacity somehow and no one, you know, you reroute the, the impulses through the brain, the neuron connections are increased when you use your brain, that probably a, a, a plays a role. Uh, but again, you know, we're all in the very beginning stages of studying this disease. There's 13% of Americans 65 ages or older who have Alzheimer's disease. What's the future? I mean, is it going to get worse before it gets better, or where are we at? I'm optimistic that we'll have some better medication for people who already have Alzheimer's disease. Uh, unfortunately, the last few years have been a little disappointing in regards to medications. You know, the, some newer ones that were coming down the pipe have not been approved by the FDA. Um, so we're still using the original ones back in the you know, early 1990s. Uh, but there's always all kinds of new drugs coming down, so we'll have some better medications or perhaps a vaccine for people who already have the disease. Um, if we catch it early enough, the earlier we start these medications, the better. Uh, but it's not all hopeless. It's not like you have Alzheimer's, you need to find a nursing home bed tomorrow because that's not the case. You know, there's lots of hope out there, lots of excitement in the field, and, uh, and we're here to help. And for people who, are, who have a family history of Alzheimer's, it's not like you're going to get it as well. You can have all the risk factors in the world for Alzheimer's and still not come down with it. You know, we don't know of any specific the uh, Alzheimer gene. Now there are some cases where people who have Alzheimer's in their 40s, that is a specific gene that gets mutated, but for the average Alzheimer patient, we don't know of yet of any one particular gene that would indicate that you're definitely going to get Alzheimer's or you're not going to get Alzheimer's. So, For people, again, who have questions regarding Alzheimer's and the RAP study, what is there a number to call? Is the best way to get in contact with you? Is there a best way to get in contact with you regarding? Yeah, just uh, contact us at the clinic. Uh, we're more than happy to do evaluations, uh, geriatric evaluations or, else, or dementia uh, specific uh, evaluations. We run a dementia care program uh, that it looks at the entire patient as a comprehensive care of the dementia patient in conjunction with the primary care physician. Uh, we have early support groups for family members and people who are just beginning to show signs of disease. So we really try to um, Take, to do a comprehensive evaluation and long-term care of the patient. Dr. Thomas Slofi from Franciscan Scamp Healthcare Geriatrics, thank you for joining thank us. Thank you. We'll be back in just a minute.